Okay, um, today we'll, we're doing the definite integral arctan of x over x dx, okay? So typically, um, when you do um, integration in order to, you know, boost your confidence that what you're doing is uh, the correct thing, sometimes you use like, I don't know, Maple or Mathematica to evaluate the integral just to make sure that you did the right thing. And so, uh, when you try to do uh, the arctan uh, of x over x in Mathematica, which I did, surprisingly, it will give you the following. So, let me take a screenshot of what, what it, what it uh, gives you. It act actually says that when you integrate arctan of x over x from 0 to 1, it says Catalan. Okay? So, you know, that, that's, that's uh, uh, fine and good if you like you're familiar uh, with what Catalan is, but if you're not familiar, you're like, what the, what, 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 what's, that, what's that Catalan? And of course, that's, the, that's, that's why I'm, I'm doing this video to give you an introduction, introduction to this um, a very, um, what they call this sort of underground um, constant known as the Catalan. So it has a, in literature, it has the symbol um, G, okay? And in fact, a quick, you know, if you do that integral and then it says Catalan, you, a quick Google of Catalan, oh, what is Catalan? It actually has the, uh, the following numerical uh, value. So 0 0.915965-5941, uh, okay? So like it's like a cell phone number. So if you're like in the Philippines, it's like a globe cell phone number. Oh, what's your number? 0915965-5941. Okay, so if you have that number, then voila, you're very lucky. Your, your number is actually Catalan's constant. So what is Catalan's constant and how do we get that? So of course, what we do is, in order to get this, let's actually try and evaluate this integral. So let me write that down again. And it is in terms of uh, tan or arctan of x. And of course, like what I did, what I usually do in my previous videos, your first li line of attack if you're like dealing with some weird um, integrand, but you know their uh, power series, expand them, you know, expand them in their uh, series form. And so, if you recall, the expansion of arctan is simply uh, the following. So, x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth uh, over 5 minus x to the seventh over seventh, and so on, okay? So you get the pattern. So you have alternating plus and minus signs, and then with uh, powers of odd numbers and reciprocal of odd numbers, okay? And so in order to integrate uh, arctan, you, we just uh, insert the series expansion of arctan and divide, integrate it term by term, noting that we have an over x there, all right? And so what you have is integral from 0 to 1 for the first term. You just have dx, so just, that's just x over x. For the second term, you have minus integral from 0 to 1 of x squared over 3. So note that this is x cubed, but you divided it by x. Okay. Then you have plus integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth over 5 dx and so on. Okay. So you can, again, do the higher terms if you want, but uh, the first uh, the term should be enough. And of course, when you do the integration, this is just trivial. This is just uh, 1, okay? This one, when you integrate x squared, it's just x cubed over 3. So you get a denominator of 3 squared. You evaluate it from 0 to 1. So since it's just a polynomial, uh, 0 will, uh, uh, will become 0. The, the whole thing vanishes, and then you have a value at 1 which is just x cube uh, of uh, cube of 1 is just 1 over 3 squared, okay? So the same thing, the third term will give you the integral is x to the fifth over 5, so that gives you 1 over 5 squared. And of course, the next term is uh, 1 over 7 uh, squared, and so on. So you get the pattern. So in fact, this one, this, this uh, series here, if, if you evaluate it numerically, it actually gives you exactly this number, okay? The 0915-965-5941, okay? Which is the Catalan's uh, constant. And in fact, if you want to, you know, uh, you use the summation of notation uh, for this um, series, you can write this as the sum from n equals uh, 0 to infinity. So you have an alternating minus sign. So you have minus 1 to the n. The denominators are odd numbers, so those are 2n plus 1, 
and then you're squaring them okay so that is basically the uh, the series um, in in literature series a series of this form we call this the uh, uh, Dirichlet uh, I, I, let me see if I have the correct spelling. Yeah, I think that's the correct spelling of Dirichlet. Beta function, okay? And we label it as uh, beta uh, of 2, all right? So you're asked, ah, beta of 2. So what beta of anything is, well, what's the general form? So the, gen the general form for the Dirichlet beta function, let's say beta of s, is actually the summation of n equals 0 to infinity. So we, which which is two here what what's the two here it's, it's either this one or this one but, but by definition the Dirichlet beta function what we're changing is the powers in the denominator so this is negative one to the n over two n plus one to the s okay so that's the uh, Dirichlet uh, beta function okay and the interesting thing about the Dirichlet beta function is that uh, for s of the form 2k minus 1, where k is an integer um, uh, greater than or equal to 1, beta of s actually has a closed form. What does that mean? It means that it, it's just you can actually um, uh, get the sum of the series um, into a single term. Okay, that's what we mean by having a closed form. So, for example, what's the simplest case? Let's say uh, k is equal to 1. Okay, when k is equal to 1, s is of course equal to 1 and so we ask what is beta of 1 well beta of 1 is just so you have again alternating uh, minus sign so you have let's write that down first n equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 to the s but s is 1 so that's to the 1 and if you evaluate that explicitly you have 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth and so on okay so that's the these are the uh, uh, terms of the Dirichlet uh, beta function for s equals 1 but this is actually very uh, very familiar because if you if you recall from above note that tan of minus 1 the series expansion was x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 and so on okay so the question is this 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 series here looks very similar okay to this series to that series when x is uh, equal to 1 so in other words when x is equal to 1 I recover this series what does that mean therefore um, beta 1 must be equivalent to the arc tangent of 1 which of course in your elementary trigonometry you know is equal to pi over 4. So this is what we mean by we can close the summation. Okay, This whole thing, 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth to minus 1 over 7 and so on, is pi over 4. Okay, Because why? Because s is of the form 2k minus 1. Well, how about, how about um, beta 2? Beta 2, it's, uh, s equals 2 is not of the form 2k minus 1. So that means this has no closed form. So you really need to write its uh, series form every time you're asked for it. 1 over 1 third squared um, plus 1 over 1 fifth squared minus 1 over 1 seventh squared and so on. You really have to write it down and evaluate the sum in order to get its value, which again gives you the Hatalan constant, which again is equal to 0915-965-5941. And so on, just like a cell phone number. The interesting thing, right, is that, uh, for example, here we have a closed form for beta one, which is um, pi over four. You might say, hey, um, I, I just I just added it. Uh, uh, this one is this number, which is equal to g. We call it g. Why why don't we call it a closed form? The pi over four. How come we 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 say that it's a closed form? So for so the thing is, this number g, the 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 a uh, Catalan number, it is actually very mysterious because this is one of the open problems in uh, mathematics today. I believe until 2015 or 2016, I don't know if there are recent papers about it, but un until 2016, we know that this number, unlike pi, we, which is um, 
irrational, this Catalan constant, we don't actually know if, if it is irrational, okay? So, so the question is, is G irrational, like pi, okay? We do not know that, and it is an open problem, okay? So that is, that is very interesting because um, it, uh, this uh, Catalan constant, uh, or the the, uh, the Catalan number is the solution to this uh, very nice looking integral um, arc tangent of um, minus one uh, arc tangent of x over x from zero to one. Yet we do not know if it is um, irrational. I believe we also don't know if it is um, transcendental as well. In other words, um, uh, not, it's not algebraic. It can be it can't be written in terms of square roots and basic arithmetic and so on. Okay. So I don't know if, if, if you're interested, maybe um, you can try and show that whether uh, uh, as to the nature of G, whether it's irrational or not. So pi, we know it to be, we know it to be um, rational, but, uh, and, ah, sorry, we, we know pi to be irrational and pi over 4 is equal to uh, arc tangent of a number, which uh, that, that's why we say that it can be written as a, close form but this sum it's it's not okay so 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 that those are the questions can we write this one in terms of a uh, a close uh, close form so as of, as of now we do not know and is g an irrational number okay so i hope you've learned um, something new today and of course i'm sure you have the catalan's constant which looks like a globe cell phone number all right so I hope you uh, check out my next videos to learn more like underground constants or some other um, hidden integrals. Okay, thank you for watching.